what I would suggest first of all uh, this question will come into the picture when you provide the uh, interview okay so you you, you are there uh, you are there as a candidate so they'll ask what word gun you are using so uh, so I, I know like we are using 5.5 and the support pack 3 so that is newly upgraded and previously we had the 5.4 okay so so this is the current version like 5.5 sp3 5. is the latest version mm -hmm. which is available okay yeah and uh, this sp3 version they are just doing a upgradation from their direct so like uh, using the devops Okay. okay, so they, they'll directly do patching activity via their uh, AWS server and all. So not individual specific things will be available. Like uh, earlier, what what they used to do, uh, like before SP3, SP2, SP1, or 5.4 version. Okay, so what they used to do, if you are facing some issue and if you raise any support ticket, so they will provide you the patch mm -hmm. specific to your version and your project only. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like uh, if you say that uh, at a time of uh, uh, what is it, a JSON call, it it doesn't support multiple call. Okay, okay. Uh, in REST API, you seen it, right? That mm -hmm. multiple call is support call one, call two, call three. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that multiple uh, REST call is not supported. So what they will do, they will provide you one patch, and that patch will be applicable for your specific version and your environment only. Okay. Okay. But now from SP3 onwards, what they have done, uh, they'll just do a generic patching activity and that patch will be applicable. Like it won't be specific to one particular environment or uh, client. It will mm -hmm. be specific, uh, like it will be common for all clients and uh, like it, they will uh, upload it on a base version, SP3. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is one of the uh, question and they'll definitely ask which version you have worked. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. version 6 is going to uh, release soon. They have already done it for a few clients, but that is in like they are just uh, doing it some sort of testing on version mm -hmm. 6. Mm -hmm. So once that uh, it will be streamlined and all uh, open is issues and the uh, bugs will be resolved, they will roll out that patch, uh, that version for all other clients. Okay. And and okay. Uh, and one more thing, like I have seen like one extra feature is called the control center in the 5.5 uh like by along with the admins right so like uh we have the few tabs there right uh, like the ars then uh, the analytics admin right attestation so the new one i have seen is called the control center but i don't know what is the use of that i have only seen in the 5.5 oh yes i have also seen but uh, not gone through that particular thing yeah 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 it's it's very new. It's yeah. actually just we got it yeah. a few weeks back. Yeah. Uh, so this is one thing which we have done. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, now one more thing. Like uh, uh, this will be one of the generic question. Like application onboarding. Mm -hmm. So in application onboarding, what they ask, uh, they like like what kind of application you have done. Mm -hmm. okay. So few generic will be there like AD application will be there, mm -hmm. database application will be there, REST okay. application will be there, mm -hmm. and um, SAP will be there. SAP mm -hmm. HANA and SAP are uh, SAP HANA. Yeah, SAP HANA are the SAP yeah. ECC. Yeah, SAP ECC. SAP ECC supports that uh, RFC connector. RFC connector, correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, uh, in, in uh, our project, I can I can see like I have seen the SAP ECC, SAP, SAP HANA, I have seen the AD, JDBC REST. Also, like uh, we have the Okta, we have the Google, and uh, we have the Summit. And um, for the other project, they also have the service now. Okay, yeah, service now only. Uh, so other things like Google and uh, other two which yeah. you have mentioned, they will be just a REST type only. But, yes, yeah. But uh, for them, some sort of uh, by default can ask, uh, like uh, what we say, that skeleton of REST API will be provided. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so where you have to just uh, update the host name and port and other few things. So uh, it will be like it will be easy for you to start working from there on. So uh, I just want to know Balde, one thing like the, the REST API, like what it's called. So API uh, once they call, so it's basically what it's basically some credential, like some some username, some password, or some yes. kind of a kind of thing. Okay. So if you if you just come uh, like uh, tomorrow or today, like if you just show me once, like from the system. Yes, yes, yes. Let me let me show you now itself what oh. does it. So if if I have anything in place, uh, let me just show. Uh-huh. Okay, so uh, so uh, w- what you understood by uh, understood by REST connect uh, REST API? What it is? So so basically, like what I get to know from them. So REST API basically get the information from the target system, what needs to be, uh, you know, uh, connect with the CVN, and by using mm-hmm. this credential, we can pull the data. Um, of that particular application into the CVN, and then uh, we can we can do the provisioning and all this type to CVN. Oh, like that. oh okay. Uh, but uh, that that what they say. But how REST internally or in backend work? Do you know that part? No, no, no. That part I absolutely don't know. Actually. Okay. So uh, so I think that will be like once it is clear, you will be easy. It will be easy for you to understand. So what I would say. So what AD is like how AD works, you know, right? So, so we actually, have to provide, we have to provide one host name, mm-hmm. okay, username, password, and then apart from this, uh, these three things, we have to provide a search filter, and uh, your base uh, like group DN, and then you have to provide a user DN, okay. So, in AD, all details are stored in a, a tree manual. Okay. So mm-hmm. one, uh, like if I have just a minute, let me start it for you. So it will be easy for you to understand. So, so uh, what I was what I'm showing you, mm-hmm. so. So this is the tree structure. Okay, tree structure means one will be root node and there will be multiple branches will be there inside that mm-hmm. node. Mm-hmm. Then inside that branch there can be multiple uh, other leaves or uh, other branches. Branches, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in AD also we have the same thing. So this okay. is one of the uh, LDAP. Uh, but mm-hmm. AD is also working on the LDAP concepts only. Yeah. So uh, yeah. your name, like if you are working in any organization, so uh, like it will be like uh, at the rate XYZ dot com, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. So that we call it as a XYZ dot com as a we call it as a the uh, domain, right? So uh, uh-huh. in in general, we used to say that uh, your domain ID is not created or AD ID is not created. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what that thing is, your ADID is like your entry in AD. Your username should be created in AD. Okay. Mm-hmm. So suppose this is one of the user which we are creating as part of birth, right? So uh, where uh, like our you, uh, uh, details will be mentioned here. Your name, first name, CN, SN, your first other thing, like email mm-hmm. ID and all. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so how we say that this user is part of uh, like uh, like what is the user id so user id will be one small thing like user.gmail 
Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. But if they said a uh, complete like uh, complete user ID or a DN of that user from where we can say that uh, we can uniquely identify this user. So for that we have to provide a complete tree structure like structured DN. So this user okay. ID like this user is a user zero. So that mm-hmm. user ID is user ID is equal to user dot zero. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this user ID is part of this particular OU. OU is equal to people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And mm-hmm. then this OU is equal to people is part of DC is equal to talk to take DC DC is equal to in. That mm-hmm. is the domain. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this user is come like uh, this is the tree structure. Uh-huh. And the other thing is like uh, we call it as a like membership, right? In AD we used to provide provisioning. Mm-hmm. And we used to reconcile the group available in AD, mm-hmm. and we provide the membership to those groups. So that is nothing but one of the other OU. Like uh, this is the user, this is the group, and mm-hmm. where we are providing the membership. Like this user is part of this group, okay, mm-hmm. and few other user are part of another group. Okay, okay? Mm-hmm. and this group, some other third party uh, like other application will use as a authorization store. Okay. okay, so mm-hmm. once user will be logged in, okay, so that uh, application will receive this user zero, either user zero or complete DN as one of the attribute. Okay, so mm-hmm. using that attribute, what they'll do, they'll connect with the AD and we'll see this user zero or this U or DN is part of how many groups. Okay, mm-hmm. so has member of or is part of or is member of. Those are the other methods available in a LDAP. Okay, so okay. using those methods, they'll check that user is part of this many groups. So based on that, the access which you are having, they'll populate the different uh, like uh, they'll do authorization and they'll uh, populate different views. Like whether you are you have a admin access, like you are part of admin group, then you will mm-hmm. have a like much more uh, uh, rewrite and execute permission and all this, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it clear? So this is how in backend AD work, or okay. any LDAP application work. Okay, mm-hmm. and in the database you already know there will be some tables and a user table and user and group. Uh, like uh, so, here we are just creating groups as a one of the branch. Okay, but in AD this branch will be worked as a one of the table. Like table uh, as a table entitlement name will be one of the table. So where we'll say that. Uh, uh entitlement id will be there and entitlement name will be there and then third one more call, uh, table will be there which shows the membership one okay. user table one mm-hmm. entitlement table and third one will be the membership table so in okay. membership will be say that user one is part of this many group so one to one mapping will be like it will be a multi valued one or it will be a, a comma separated one or it will be a um uh, one two uh, entitlement one user one entitlement two so multi uh, multiple row can also be there okay okay so this is how in backend we ha- uh, we have to deal with uh, deal with any target application okay okay mm-hmm. but what what will happen in a rest connector okay so rest mm-hmm. connector uh y- you are aware of the java right uh you can mm-hmm. with java very little bit. I only know it's object oriented programming because but I actually just come from the SAP background. Uh, so like I didn't have much uh, scope to do into the programming things there because SAP is structured by their own, right? The, mm-hmm. Their own key codes and all this. So yeah, but but if you just uh, let me tell me just little bit uh, about the concept, then I can I can do that. But yeah. I can understand. So, uh, like if you show me show me some code, I can understand like what it is what it says yes so so what i like i'm just providing the basic understanding why uh, what they are uh, what these things are so it will be easy for you to understand right correct 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 so, yeah. uh, like ad part you understood uh, properly right what yeah. we are actually doing and what it is yeah yeah so good thing but since this is very very new for me so like is it possible like do you have any sort of documentations or something like or or some like in the text file also like the one you have just opened is it possible just write some steps like then what happened like if you are after the call if you actually send me the text file and i'll ask them to provide this video then what happened like after the class before you come back tomorrow now i'll just 
you know just listen it one more time just to uh, memorize and sure. then do some more understanding so what i will do what i will do even it doesn't understand ad as active directory mm -hmm. yeah this is this is actually not the smarter one because um, earlier i yeah. have done like little bit uh, the rss stuff and i have seen their documentation it's far and far better through that also people can see it and work by their own but here it is like this is the main issue like they don't have the proper documentation some of them even even notice something like uh, for the disconnected application and for the connected application so once they create the security system right security system and endpoint so the, the mm -hmm. some some different settings i have seen they have uh, for the connected mm -hmm. and the disconnected applications too so yeah, that is also that like not, yeah yeah yes, yes. i'm just 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 so, telling but that is also not given very properly in the fresh desk like these are the differences mm -hmm. Okay, so I have given you this uh, link for Active Directory Connector. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So whatever we have just mentioned, it will be somewhere available here. Uh, let me. So these are the things which are. What are the things are supported and not supported, and all those things we have just mentioned. Okay. Uh, this is also like object class. Uh, okay, so AD supports this object class thing. Okay, so how okay. we'll say that? Let, let me show you. Uh, let me show you here. So what is the difference between this CN is equal to de developer and uh, we have some user with the CN as well. Let me show you. So uh, like UID is equal to this. So how we'll say that this one is the user and this one is the uh, group. Okay, so how to differentiate okay. that basically? Yeah, so mm -hmm. in AD, we call it as an object class. Okay, okay. so mm -hmm. if you open this developer, uh, developer is a group, right? Mm -hmm. So for developer, object class is mentioned as a group of unique names. Got it, got it. Yes. So here itself, we are saying that, uh, like uh, what we say, property of this particular DN is a, uh, we, are, we are segregating or we are bifurcating it as a group. So mm -hmm. once we... Uh, if different object class is mentioned, so based on that, uh, the, its uh, character uh, characteristics will be different, and it will be modified. Got it. Mm -hmm. And if it is a user, then we have a inet org person, person and organizational person. So Got like it. its class will say that itself it says that uh, this object is a person. Person yes. and based on that, uh, different attribute will be populated. So, if you say for developer, it is showing that it's only CN value, uh -huh. right? Okay, and for user, we have a different other attribute, different other like attributes and last because that yeah. other attributes are not uh, uh, like uh, related to group attribute, group attribute, okay. correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, in in uh, live environment or in actual project, what you will have uh, not only CN but you will have other attributes as well, display name, description, and okay. some other extended attributes as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, those other attributes will be available for groups and what? for user. All other attributes like by default, whatever comes into the picture, those will be there. Uh, uh, other than other uh, attributes also will be there. So they will map as an extended one, extended two, or they will just give some uh, like e name with the, which the end user can understand, right? So mm -hmm. those mapping you have to do. So any application you are going to do integration, okay? So mm -hmm. you have to get this details from target application, like application score. Mm -hmm. What will be the connecting parameter? First of all, okay. Mm -hmm. So for this, so let me show you. Okay, so to connect to any AD application, you need one host name. Okay. Which on which port it is working? So three eight nine is by default non SSL like SSL uh, non SSL port, and that is called it as L uh, LDAP. LDAP port. Okay. And if it is a, if it is a six three six, then it will mm -hmm. be a LDAP S. That will be a secure uh, uh, okay. SSL connect secure. Secure. Okay. Port. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. SSL and for channel that, you basically, please. And you have to provide the certification in a uh, Tomcat server and all. Okay, so in, and case six, six, in case of the uh, 636. 636. In case of 636, we need the, the certification validation should be there, right? 
Yes. So, okay. uh, so that also will be provided by target application. So, who's the uh, AD application owner one day? Okay. 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 And then here uh, we are just doing from the this application. So, only two things are required: bind DN, like username and password. Okay. okay. But if it is a uh, if we are doing a connection from Savian, then in that case other things are also required. So, uh, this part we cover, right? So, what will be the object class for group so it will group be group, group user, it will be person it will be person yep. okay then <clears throat> so here they are just doing that uh, how the ssl certificate they, they have to source for mm -hmm. 636 okay mm -hmm. correct mm, just a minute here uh, here then these are the details which we have to put at a time of onboarding the this ad application in Savior. So, okay let's see if i have any uh, no I, I don't have okay so here you have to provide one of the dn like what will be the username uh, this mm -hmm. will be uh, and this will be a service account to connect to the ad okay mm -hmm. username port and host name we have already done okay mm -hmm. And then um, password and this one domain. Mm -hmm. So domain I have already shown you. This will be the domain in our case. DC is equal to to ticket. DC is equal to in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. And then base DN that will be uh, all like not always but most probably it will be similar. Okay. Okay. And then uh, inactive container, advanced config, inactive container, like once user are deleted, then where we are putting those uh, users. So what will happen? Uh, just like any item tool or CVN, we are not actually deleting any user from a system. Correct. Correct. Even though user is terminated from workday, okay, mm -hmm. we'll still have that reference of that user in CVN, but marked exactly. as a inactive. Inactive, right. Yeah. Yep. So same scenario uh, people used to follow in AD as well. So what will what they will have? They will have two uh, two OUs. One is people OU and another mm -hmm. OU will be as a deleted User. people OU. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Deleted people OU, okay. okay. So uh, this so is, is the any, for is, there any, other is there any sign, uh, Santosh, like uh, the active or inactive? For AD? Yeah, in AD. Uh, so yeah. like you said so in ad yes yes so uh, let me show in a uh, this is not the ad actually but if it is ad so there is a user control attribute okay, okay. that mm -hmm. user control attribute has some different name uh, like different values so 512 is uh, mentioned as an active uh, user attribute and 514 is mentioned as a uh, inactive user let me just mm -hmm. check right here it is okay so 512 and 544 is one is all, uh, told as an active one. Okay. Got and it. And 514, okay, here they have provided the complete list as well. Okay. So user control, user account control value. Okay. So mm -hmm. using this uh, in AD side, they uh, means, uh, like they maintain the user's uh, uh, status, mm -hmm. whether it is active or inactive. So okay. different control values are there. And based on that, we can uh, we can populate these values as well. Okay. Okay. Now let's go back to our initial thing. So you understood like uh, like we are, we are going to check this AD part in detail. Okay, but mm -hmm. at the moment I'm just showing you a few things yeah, like basic, how yeah, you yeah. connect it to AD, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So let's go back to your initial question, which was the uh, rest one. How rest connector works? Mm -hmm. okay. So, but, so uh, but I... uh, jump into the rest one. So there is the two things: the rest and soap, right? So like, what uh -huh. is what is the basically difference? Like, what is that that the because in for the workday I have seen the workday rest and workday soap. I'll even I'll show you. I I have the uh, like snapshot. I'll show you from there till tomorrow. Yes. Huh? So yes. like, what is what is what is the difference between that? Like, what is what is the rest and like what is the soap like why why like this two is required at least sure so uh rest and soap uh what i'll i'll provide you some basic and uh, like basic difference and uh you can go through this google uh, 
So uh, uh, there is a difference in terms of working mechanism. Okay. Rest works on a JSON based and SOAP works on a XML based. So uh, XML. if I yeah, that I have seen. Yeah. 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 But uh, apart from that, like uh, other things will be easy. Uh, so rest is a uh, uh, older version of this uh, this way like uh, to call any uh, uh, web API. Okay. Mm -hmm. So REST was in uh, like uh, people used to work uh, use SOAP as a REST API connection like uh, web API uh, web, uh, web, uh, to call any web app and mm -hmm. web service and in future like currently people are using the REST as a, a web service. So both are current uh, like type of uh, web service only but for SOAP we have to follow that XML version it will be similar mention is as XML like this we have to call. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for uh, so uh, for rest we have to call it via this JSON method. Yes. So so one thing like the like the this XML like it's given the version one point zero soap environment environment uh, sorry uh, it's given envelope or something like that. So like these are the kind of the standard I can understand. Let's say like your our URL can be changed based on the project like the HTTP mm -hmm. www whatever. No, this will be called. common. This will be still common. Or this will be still common. So where where just I need the change required like for the project wise. So like what will be the variable part like this one ha has to be just same copied into the system or like uh... I'll, I'll show you. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes, this I'll, I'll show you. So th this is just a body session body part body part and that we have and here in uh, rest also uh, in rest. This is the body part. Okay. Okay. So here we are not sending any connecting parameter or anything and uh, I'll, I'll let me show you one thing and then it will be easy for you. So uh -huh. let me just take one uh, rest uh, like Java application. So what we are doing. Uh, le let me create one for you. So this code is nothing but just it is printing a hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how we are printing this? So this is the main method we are calling and that main method internally is doing a hello print. Okay. Okay. Now instead of hello print, we can do one more thing like uh, here we can create a DB connection. Okay, and that DB connection will store uh, will get some data from any table and it will it will populate like instead of printing hello, it will print a user detail. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, for that we have to write one code like we have to just connect to the D DB and the D database will do a uh, select query to the database and one of the table and we will we'll get those details. Okay, so for that also what we have to do, we just need to call this method main method. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. and if we have some specific things in my in mind, so we'll we can provide few other arguments like I, I want to print uh, just a minute with my close hole. So I, I want a, a detail user detail, but for particular this user some tools or uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that argument will pass as a, in this method while creating a, like while printing user detail and it will mm -hmm. uh, provide us the detail of that user only. Okay. okay. So this is how any object oriented or uh, application works or uh, so, programming so, so language. Just let, me, let me tell you just uh, just one thing. So just like my my understanding because I don't know Java, but what I understand from there, 
everything we are just passing so that is passing through a particular method so like here is a little pub public static void then you have put name so that is basically the class so that the class is basically just containing this this particular uh, syntax like what is the print what you have given and there you have seen like that from the db connection whatever whatever the values basically coming in from the user field maybe so that will be that will be captured by calling this particular uh, the main method right so like yes so like whatever the name will just come from there so the main method will return that particular value so in the system it will be just considered as a name as a user name or something like that so uh, for the uh, like uh, like showcase purpose we have used this main method otherwise it will be different based on the like mm -hmm. it will be complete like let me show you if i have any uh, public or anything okay so here we are just doing a let, let me show you this one okay mm -hmm. so this is one of the main method right so just uh -huh. the same example which we have done. So in main uh -huh. method, what we are doing, we are creating one database connection. Uh -huh. So this database connection, uh, and using the database connection, and we are doing the certification item as well. So I think this was for sale point. So in certification, uh, in sale point, we have some certification item. So that uh -huh. certification item we are getting from one more. Uh, uh, what we say on another class this is the certification item class okay so mm -hmm. here we are uh, we are just doing a connection create statement and we are executing the select query on a database okay okay and from that from there on uh, we are printing this data whatever result set we have received okay okay and then there is one more method where we are passing this data result set as an argument and from there we are just doing some other things like what exactly uh, what exact detail we want whether we want custom map or policy violation or attributes or mm -hmm. uh, other things okay mm -hmm. so but I, I just need to ask one thing since i don't know the java so is it something i need to do as an admin in Trivium? this the, this uh, the no, java no. You, you just need to have some sort of understanding or uh, even that is not uh, required at the moment uh, mm -hmm. but for some sort of customization you mm -hmm. require so let me show you that in a sale uh, so portal like uh, this okay so let me show you somewhere over here it will be mentioned okay so here they have mentioned uh, okay. what they're exactly doing uh, object filter uh, user control uh, it's not that much um, so it will be there uh, just for our uh, just to tweak our requirement so uh, let me just say like it will be just normal if else or case values and all those things So, so basically, just uh, uh, what I what I understand, like I need to uh, do the, learn the parallelly uh, the SQL very well, and also like mm -hmm. the JSON, right? Uh, yes, uh, JSON is uh, definitely it must. It is must. But is JSON must. is not something which uh, which requires that much time. Uh, it will be just a uh, like one field will be there and its value will be there okay so okay. if in if in in short if you if you say what is json okay so json is something like it will be started and end with the curly braces <laughs> okay and uh, one attribute will be there suppose cn <laughs> with the purpose and uh, that cn value will be there okay okay <laughs> and if if that particular object has a multiple attributes, then it will be separated by comma. Oh, then it's then, easy. Yeah. Yes. Suppose. Okay. And so everything will be inside the like, double quotes. Hmm? Everything will be inside the double quotes. Yes. Like you can see here as well. Like this one. Uh -huh. EN, country, state, state. 
Okay. And wh what is that the dollar sign? Like what is what the uh, that dollar sign is specific to uh, Savient itself. So whenever we oh. mention anything inside this dollar and curly braces, so uh, that we are say, uh, saying to Savient that this particular thing is a dynamic attribute. So this CN value it will take from a Savient account object because here okay. we are creating account, right? So Correct. there will be one more attribute in account where its mm -hmm. uh, value will be marked as a CN. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we are if we are putting those value uh, this uh, writing this JSON in an account uh, section, then in that mm -hmm. case we do not need to mention account dot CN because we are already uh, what we say referring the account type object. Oh yeah, but because we are putting it, inside the account account field. That's why. It will uh, only account JSON. Account. There will account be a JSON, JSON yeah. called account, account name yeah. JSON. Yeah. So so yeah. it will so it will be auto automatically referred. Okay. The CN means whatever is the uh, along with the account, I'll just pick it up dynamically. So whatever it's coming, okay. I'll just pick it up. Yeah. But in account section, if you want to uh, get a reference of user, then in that case we have to say that user dot cut tree. Okay. okay. So okay. what it will do? It will take you. Uh, it will take a reference of like the value of a country from a user entry. Not from the account attribute. Account, got it, got it, got it. So once we're creating the user, so there love, we have the country inside the Savian. So if you are putting any yes. sort of value over there, so it will just pick up from that particular field. So that is basically it's showing here. The user. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, true, true. Okay. So this is how it is. And what I was saying for the Java part or JSON part, so it will be easy. Like, uh, and one more thing is like a multi value. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just now what we have covered, uh, like, uh, suppose there will be multiple mobile number or what say, what will be the multiple venue or value? Maybe the two office number. They have, they have the address line one, address line two, right? No, uh, uh, that won't be a multiple value. Multiple uh, okay. value. So here, it, it, uh, here we have an object class, uh, but mm -hmm. for the general scenario, what we can do? Suppose we can, uh, one user can have a multiple mobile number. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So how will, uh, how will print that uh, multiple mobile number like this? Square bracket. Mm -hmm. Inside square bracket, we'll have a five digit number mm -hmm. uh, digit, like not daughter uh, it will be comma okay okay so this is how it will store uh, like it will uh, print the uh, store this value as a list or an array got it got it okay if it is a multi value otherwise it will be like this one and there is one more scenario like uh, the it it will store itself an object if I have, let me just check. I think I have closed those things. <coughs> Not having it at the moment. Uh, let me find somewhere else. Um, No, uh, I'll, I'll have to see uh, if it is available here. Let me check. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So what we have done, uh, we seen one thing, right? You uh, that attribute, uh, attribute and its value. Attribute and its value, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then good. what we have, uh, one more thing we have seen, attribute and then square bracket and all value in a comma separated value, uh, manner. Okay. And then there is one more thing, is the attribute as an object. Okay. So uh -huh. this attribute will have this uh, curly braces. Okay. Uh -huh. And inside that we'll have a, uh, what say attribute and its value mapping. Mm -hmm. So the if it is a multi valued we call it as a list at uh, list as a type. And if it has a mapping attribute like uh, uh, like uh, that attribute have a value as a one of one more object then we call it as a map as a type. Mm -hmm. 
okay so inside this attribute we'll have another mapping of value so attribute. i i i just i just getting little lost here can you just can you just uh, just repeat one more time uh, sure. so wh what we have seen first it will be a value uh, attribute and its value in json yeah correct correct okay. yeah so it's so enable so you know just just let me understand one thing so like uh, like the uh, used so used in uh, sorry what is that used use dn in, from account okay use dn from account so that is that is yes so its value is yes so like i just need to ask like where i'll use this one like uh, in which purpose i'll use this one uh, I am just giving you one uh, high level idea about JSON. So this okay. is specific. Got it, got it. Specific, okay. So like if, if somebody is just uh, giving some statement like uh, whether it is true or false or right or wrong. So like it's kind of like the DN account, it will be the yes means it will be available into the system. Then the move DN yes means it will be available into the system. No, 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 uh, that we will cover in later part. It is specific okay. to AD only. Okay. I am just yeah. giving you high level uh, detail about yeah, yeah. Yeah, JSON yeah. only. Yeah, yeah, sure. Please go ahead. So, uh, what I was saying. So, what we have seen. First, attribute well, uh, attribute type. Uh, or what we say, attribute and its value. Attribute label and its value, right? Then we have seen one more uh, attribute which has multiple values. And that we can represent like this. And then we have one more attribute or uh, one more thing in JSON. We call it an attribute. And in, inside that value, instead of providing the actual value or any date, we'll provide one more JSON inside the, as a as a value of that attribute. So it is a separate it, attribute, right? Uh, it it is uh, it, it it is common like it, it is part of this entire JSON only. It's not oh, a separate. Exactly. It is a separate attribute, but it's uh, this attribute has a value as one more JSON. Got it, got it, got it. So it is is basically just kind of integrated into the one JSON, but we are just giving the different different attribute with the their corresponding value. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. And then uh, one more thing which you are saying that uh, uh, Java or something, right? So it won't be a Java, but uh, you have to say like here uh, one name the attribute is available right uh -huh. so what we are saying uh, we are checking dollar okay so service account owner map dot get service account type so we will have one attribute available at a connection service account owner map dot get and there will be one service account type as a one of the attribute so we receive this value and we are checking that whether type is service account this one okay so uh -huh. in that case this is the ternary operation we are using okay so what's the purpose of that one so uh, like if this condition is true mm -hmm. so let me just highlight this is one of the condition okay uh -huh. if this condition is true then the first thing which comes after this ternary operation will be uh, will be marked as a value name value so in that case dynamic service uh, dynamic service name mm -hmm. okay so this is one of the dynamic attribute in an account form which they have created okay. Okay. so this will be the value of this name otherwise if this condition is not fulfilled then uh -huh. whatever is available after this colon uh -huh. That will be our actual value of name. So in that case, Got user dot employee class. But here, what they have done instead of providing the actual value, like mm -hmm. in that, like uh, let me show you here. Condition, okay. Mm -hmm. One or two, okay. So uh -huh. if condition will be fulfilled, then. Mm -hmm. Or uh, that value, like let me just say, value is equal to uh, value is equal to condition uh, ternary operation one colon two. Okay, so what will be the value, uh, like uh, after this condition? So if condition is true, then in that case value is, value will be one, and if it one. is false, in that case it will be two. 
so we are segregating it by the colon over there basically so whatever it is it will yes. be coming yes, yes. so these are the just the normal thing uh, let me just uh, ternary operation in java uh, these are the common concept which uh, which you will require okay okay so here it is a case dot equals upper case so then john otherwise john john so but, but I'll, I'll, uh, uh, what what i'll just uh, do but it will be very helpful can it, it, that the the notepad you have created right can just put that the particular json part what you have written and, and this link so tomorrow before you start in the daytime you know like i will just clear this concept from my end because then it will be really helpful i think like once you'll just move uh, on. Let, let, let me share you when uh, this one sure uh -huh. And it will be easy. I think that compiler will also be available. Uh -huh. uh, logic operation, bitwise operation, assignment operation. Okay, so this link will be helpful. Mm -hmm. Same. Uh, so th this is a few things about JSON. Okay, uh -huh. and now let let me complete this postman part or the rest part, and it will be easy for you to now understand. Okay, correct, correct. so yeah. so what we have seen uh, to uh, get any data from LDAP, we have some APIs available. Okay, to mm -hmm. get the data from LDAP, and that uh, it will follow that tree tree structure, right? That mm -hmm. I want this data from this OU, and where username is this and all, right? Uh -huh. But how we will say that. Uh, suppose Google, right? Google itself uh -huh. provides some uh, REST API available. Okay. Uh -huh. So how you will say that I want, uh, f like suppose take an example of Facebook. Uh, mm -hmm. So how will say that I want uh, data of um, your account that how many friends I have. Uh -huh. Provide me the list of friends which I have. Okay. Uh -huh. So what in that case, what f Facebook will do Facebook will have one API exposed. Okay. okay. So when mm -hmm. we say expose, that means th those URLs will be available for you to uh, take the data. L let me just check if it is there. Mm -hmm. So it will be easy for you to get. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, here they have put So this is how we will help. We'll uh, will write in future this mm -hmm. thing. So uh, these are the APIs available for uh, Facebook. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. suppose uh, they have one graph as the domain, and then this complete API is exposed to the uh, exposed by Facebook. Okay. So okay. what we are actually doing here your user access token so we'll have one token and that mm -hmm. token we are going to pass mm -hmm. and uh, this url we are going to form is like user uh, your user id mm -hmm. so that will be our, i think first part of email or complete email then mm -hmm. feed then access token we have to enter okay okay and then if i have any other thing uh So the access token basically it will be kind of a string right like once it is generated yes it will be kind of string so uh, what will happen in ad we used to connect by username and password right 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 uh -huh. okay Correct. so in rest api we have few things for the authentication like how we'll say that uh, uh, this detail should be provided to me or not because that, this url if you will provide me okay mm -hmm. so i can get the data so let me uh, let me uh, explain you this example itself okay mm -hmm. so this is one of the cvn uh, rest api okay mm -hmm. okay 
so in save and suppose that if uh, this login and okay so suppose uh, there are the things which we can do in a CVN authentication, identity, administrator, analytics, access request, and other things. So uh, just in menu, common utilities. Okay. So suppose I want to create one user. Uh -huh. Okay. In Silp, uh, in CVN. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how we can create that user? either we have to create one attribute uh, one uh, one uh, object so record in work uh, workforce table or work day mm -hmm. and from there uh, we'll do a rec uh, reconciliation right aggregation correct uh -huh. and then that account will be created in silver otherwise yeah. there is one more thing like we can directly create like just uh, just the way you say it right uh, uh like uh, using that service account you said service account or contractor right <laughs> correct yeah direct so using form one using form one we say that we used to provide the first name and last name and all the things and that account mm -hmm. will be created correct save mm -hmm. has one more thing it call it a, like that form structure one that mm -hmm. form uh, that form one uh, either we can do it via ui or the same thing we can do it via rest api so cvn has exposed some rest api to the internet or uh, we can will not say internet but we'll say that uh, this rest api has exposed uh, that expose and that uh, scope will be based on the client environment whether client is exposed to the internet that uh, system or not this urls or this domain or these servers are exposed to internet or not okay okay so i'll just get it from the postman this information right for for the for any any applications api right yes okay so 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 this postman uh, let me go through this portal so it will be easy now for you uh -huh. okay so one url will be there so this we this url we call it as endpoint okay okay or uh, this url we create, like this endpoint is exposed now to get this uh, data from the uh, i think this one will be easy for you to understand okay so get uh, get list of users okay mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. in that like we have few things like get post delete and all those things so uh -huh. easiest one will be get one okay so okay. we are just getting the data from cvn like uh, how many users are there okay mm -hmm. okay so what we what we will do we will have one exposed the uh, url endpoint that is a user mm -hmm. okay and then in the authorization part we have to say that how we are going to connect okay uh -huh. okay uh -huh. so if this url is not exposed to everyone or even though it is exposed to everyone like just a way uh, i even though i have your username uh, username like which email id you are using to log into your corporate uh, um, uh, corporate email or the uh -huh. outlook mm -hmm. but i need password right right uh -huh. okay that i will not have mm -hmm. so same is the case with rest api or uh, web service as well so mm -hmm. web, web service are two type like uh, one will be the unauthenticated or unprotected one so from unprotected urls we can mm -hmm. do we can download those anything or we can get the data okay but if it is a protected one then in that case we have to provide this uh, this kind of details based on the type mm -hmm. so one will be the basic authentication where we have mm -hmm. to provide the username and password Mm -hmm. okay so this will be the generic one okay mm -hmm. okay so uh, if uh, so here when we uh, we are going to co co configure any rest application in cvn we'll say what authentication type their rest api is supporting okay or their okay. web service is supporting okay mm -hmm. that is the first one then we'll say if it is a basic authentication we will ask for username and password password okay Mm -hmm. okay. uh, if it is a api key based then we will say that what is the key value pair mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. like for the octa i have seen it's the oauth 
Yes, for over octa. two will be for Octa. Okay, so okay. for that they will provide us the access token and BRR token. Okay. Mm-hmm. One access token will be available. Uh-huh. So okay. now, one quick question I have uh, for you here. So like for for the gate method, right? So we got the URL absolute on the top one, like uh, like the URL ECM something. Then in the down, mm-hmm. once we once we'll coming to the the parameters so can you just go to the params tab, tab one more time yes. so yeah so here here basically just so what exactly we are doing here so we can we basically based on that we can download their all data basically through here but in the authorization yes. so but the authorization we need to check like whether this is exposed or exposed on the non-exposed so if it is if it is the exposed then automatically just like like the protected one and the non-protected one so if it is a non-protected one, then basically we'll get the user ID password. But in case of the protected one, then we need to check like what kind of protected. So if it is the basic, like it is the type, the type of that particular application is basic, then we'll get the user ID password, right? So then, but yes. in that case, is it something we need to know? Like, like let's say for the workday, I mean the workday in the JSON I have seen, like in the connection JSON, right? So I mm-hmm. have seen that it's a type of basic it is written, like and and yes. like so we have generated some. Right? yeah this so, yeah so the the basic authorization so it will have the user id password so basically like that the key also the three, 356 key or something like that i remember so it's basically just uh, come through the user id and password but we yeah. need to know like the once the application will come so we'll get to know like what kind of web service it supports right like like the oauth or the basic so this is the type of web service right uh, that is a uh, it's it is a type of authorization. Authorization, okay, okay. No, yes. my means this what I'm asking. Uh-huh. No, my, means what I'm asking. Like let's say like uh, I'm I'm going to any project and somebody is saying okay like you uh, uh, like it, any ABC application will be uh, connected with the uh, Civian, right? So so mm-hmm. in that case, just we need to ask we need to ask like what kind of authorization uh, uh, this this particular. Yeah, yeah, this this one this particular application supporting right yes so this could this will be the question for the application team who should provide me right so yes so from application team you have to ask few things which i'll uh, let me tell you first will be the url uh, uh-huh. like complete endpoint exposed endpoint for the different mm-hmm. purpose okay yeah. so let, let me show you for the user one they have something like this uh, like these are the parameters uh-huh. okay let let me sh- remove it so it will be easy for you what these parameters are doing we are just mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so this is the url so uh-huh. user endpoint is exposed for uh-huh. to get the user detail okay and just the same way if we want to get the account detail mm-hmm. so for that account assign account to user this endpoint uh, this endpoint is exposed mm-hmm. okay for the entitlement different endpoint will be exposed so uh, okay. only one thing i want to understand here was how we can understand it is exposed like uh, which one will indicate me it is exposed uh, these details will be provided by application team okay, okay we do not need to worry about it um, okay 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 got it got it got it okay mm-hmm. so because the, this this naming convention will be decided solely by uh, application team so just team. the way here uh, let me give you example here we have said that get certification item this value uh-huh. i can i can change it to anything okay so just okay. Sub, suppose abc okay uh-huh. so we will not be aware, like we'll not have a uh, idea like what in backend they have configured whether they have mentioned right, it right. as the ebc or the get certification item okay so they these are the details provided by application team got it got it got it got it mm-hmm. okay so what they'll do they'll provide our uh, that expose endpoints mm-hmm. then in some cases we have to provide the parameters as well like what parameters we have to use so this parameter is nothing but a filter so okay. suppose we want to get the user data from work day but those user data should be active only then in that okay. case they'll say that uh, they have one attribute called status mm-hmm. 
state and that value should be active okay okay, okay. Uh -huh. so this is how we call it as a like uh, this uh, so that parameter will be putting for here, here in a url as a question mark mm -hmm. and value and it's uh, like attribute and its value and same thing mm -hmm. is goes with the google as well like all url what we whatever we write here like suppose mm -hmm. um uh from okay um, okay so if i'll copy this link mm -hmm. uh, no not okay uh, um, It is the it is not available. Let me do one thing. Um so normally we have one redirection. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Like uh, just a minute. I'll let me. I think it will be available here. But oh, this also there. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Uh -huh. So suppose here you can see question mark tab is equal to rm right uh -huh. so in in your browser also you can check question mark uh, tab is equal to rm and something like that right so uh -huh. this is the parameter we are sending along with the url along with the url got it okay mm -hmm. so what will happen when we enter that url so what it will do it will open gmail but uh -huh. it will open gmail with help of this parameter so it will say that tab we have to open that remove and something mm -hmm. like so global and inbox so it will mm -hmm. end up on inbox page itself mm -hmm. not on uh -huh. another home page got it got so, it got it. so we are indicating google that i want to open this page and for that we are passing some parameters uh -huh. same is the case here as well we want a user detail okay uh -huh. but we want only user which have status as active active active, active. got it okay. got it so got it. this is how we configure parameters got it so so like so like basically uh, from from here like if i want to tomorrow if i want to generate some reports also then also i'll be able to get it through this one because it will only only show me like the active data yes like the, yes the user active yes. data instead of yes. going to the uh, your uh, like let's say like if i have the access in the back end and i knew the user id password by using this url and its corresponding user id password i can pull up like who are the active users in the back end system available now yes yes mm -hmm. and uh, one more thing like uh, so suppose uh, currently we are using the analytics tool in a sale point right <laughs> for a report generation and all suppose uh -huh. uh, in in other project uh, co that requirement comes into the picture like they have some another tool like bi tool uh -huh. okay so that tool they are using for the reporting purpose because that uh -huh. those tools are just uh, solely uh, created for a reporting purpose so they have uh, some better uh, what is a feature in terms of reporting right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so those tools also need data from some some sort of a database or using those REST API, correct. right? Suppose correct. we want uh, all user which are created today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in that case, what we will do? We will expose this user API, this one, to BI team, and we'll say that if you want to uh, get the data user data so suppose like uh, normally uh, till this time we say that we will get the data from other application right but here we we are going to send the data okay so That's suppose right. bi team asks that uh, i want a endpoint and i want a one re a web service details from where we get the user data 
which uh -huh. are created today so how you will do so you will say that you will expose this endpoint you will say that this is the url which you have entered mm -hmm. okay then uh, suppose these are the parameters available so uh, one of them will be create date so and then you have to provide the value as a less than one date or something or two day date okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that parameter you have to send then you have to say uh, this uh, CVM supports uh, uh, or token we are a token based authentication so that you have to provide this token mm -hmm. and that token itself will not be generated automatically so for that to generate this token you have to call this get authentication method mm -hmm. okay in get authentication method you have to provide the username and password mm -hmm. okay and in, in uh, not in authorization you have to send it via body okay. in body you have to send okay and other parameters like what are the headers you have to say to like the normal one application like this body has the content type as application json and all those things mm -hmm. so once we send those details it will generate one token that token we have to use by uh, calling this api so we have multiple call system right call one call two uh, right right yeah okay. so uh, this first call will be to get authentication token and that token we are going to use in a another call another call yeah okay mm -hmm. but in 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 uh, in what we say in cvn we have one more call, thing call it as a connection json right connection json correct uh -huh. So connection JSON will have this authentication token part and from that connection JSON, once we get the token, we will uh, call it in a user account or account JSON. So mm -hmm. that is a different part. It won't be a call one, call two. It will be yeah. a, it will take an, uh, it will take a token from connection JSON and mm -hmm. from then it will do a call one, call two things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is how REST API works. Okay. Okay, and then we have to provide some details in body part if it is there. Okay, so normally we have to provide body in terms of post request. Okay, so uh, like I'll go, I'll show you a few things like what are the things will be required for you, and you can go through this each and every part by yourself by googling. Okay. Uh -huh. But normally we will need get post and delete get post and delete okay okay so get will be used to get the data mm -hmm. so for reconciliation we will use get operation get, yeah. mm -hmm. for the provisioning operation we will use the post operation so in post uh -huh. operation we have to provide the body okay like okay. if we want to create an account in that google or google one okay so that mm -hmm. they'll have one expose endpoint suppose create user okay mm -hmm. and that exposed endpoint will uh, will support some sort of authorization headers mm -hmm. they want Mm -hmm. and they'll have some body structure they'll need like at a time of create user you need to send uh, 10 attributes from cvn uh -huh. that first name last name is required user some sort of email id is required and all those things mm -hmm. so those mm -hmm. things we will put it in a in a json format JSON and format. we'll send those data to that expose endpoint and that endpoint internally will create those users question here uh, the quick question so like like here in the username is given some like this value already right so like if i want to make it dynamic right so like uh so my question is like let's say i have a hundred record right like let's say username this first name last name so will it come here the hundred different record or like i need to have pass it uh through some the, the dynamic value and then it will go and just populate into the target yeah yes yes so for that let me tell you so that will that will be part of cvn side right uh -huh. okay so so cvn supports those things so let me show you okay so this is a uh, let uh, create account json this will be uh -huh. required create account json right correct, correct yeah mm -hmm. so this create account json will be called only once per user per user okay right. so inside this json we do not need to put any logic which will create a hundred account Correct. this logic should be 
uh, should be used for one user only, one user account only, not mm -hmm. for hundred one. Okay. And for the dynamic one, we have to provide the dynamic value in a such like in a dollar manner. Dollar Got calibration it. and its value, dynamic value. Whenever is like the dollar means like it is the dynamic, this is the dynamic attribute yes. basically. Yes. Okay. 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 So like in that case, I need to I need to have some specific uh, like the value like this. Like here is the CN, right? So I should I should consider something even in the postman, some kind of value. So in that case, whatever the values are there with the CN, it will pick up everything, right? Like here instead okay. of giving this so from value, from postman, you have to provide the absolute value because here the dynamic value will not uh, available, right? Yeah, no, 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 I understand that. I'm I'm what I'm saying. Like like here, just one name is given, right? One specific user name is given. So yes. I'm, I'm saying in the in the postman also, like instead of giving the name, so just to make it, uh, just just to pick up uh, one one dynamic attribute for savient. So like, do I have to give like we have seen CN over there, right? Like dollar and then yes. in the bracket it was the yes. CN. Instead of username, we have to send the CN. CN. So like that's what I'm saying. So here it will be something like that. Like instead of username, you should be the CN colon something. Or else if it is a username, then in the JSON also it will be the username. It will be not. Yes. In that case. Yes. 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 Okay. That's okay. true. Yeah. yeah. Okay.